Diamonds, diamonds, diamonds. So shiny, so wonderful, but I am still not happy. The problem is, I always want more. No matter how many I have, it never seems to be enough. Clearly the problem is my own. Something wrong with myself inside. For I am not earning enough. I must have more. More diamonds, I say. Give me more. Oh, whenever I'm feeling down, I can at least always come here to think and wonder. <sighs> here, here, buddy. Let me help you back in. Oh! Oh! That's it! That's brilliant! That's genius! I have the answer now! How do we make diamonds? Compassion! Kindness! Charity! Yes! Yes, we must exploit the goodwill of the Hermits. We must indeed. What we have to do is save the Striders. <laughs> yes! Yes, this is my best plan yet. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. Are you looking at the pillager, or are you looking at the roof? Yes, look at this glorious thing. Wait, what? Another one? Well, it looks like it's uh, it's boating season again. In you get, in you get. As for your friend, gonna get rid of that one. So that is the second one of these that we captured, and I will of course spend some time sitting in the boat with this fella, so that uh, he gets pacified. And it's rather strange, but there doesn't appear to be more around here. Except these fellas, these ones over here, they're from a different day. Look, we've got quite a few of them captured. I definitely need to make use of them at some point in the future. Sadly, we can't make them inhabitants of these buildings because there's going to be loads of villagers inside and we don't want them getting scared. And that was a total distraction because I was here to show you this roof which has been finished after another AFK session at the copper farm. Goodness me, I do not want to build any more roofs out of this copper material. But what I do want to do is build my contraptions inside of each of these houses. The issue is, I'm currently completely out of redstone. So what are we going to do about that? We are going to build a farm, of course. And the last couple of seasons of Hermitcraft, I've actually built the same witch farm over and over again, just because it's such a great design that always works. However, this season, I do want to do things differently. And for that, we have to head to the nether. And if you're wondering, why is there moss on the ground here? Well, here's an action replay of what happened. I logged in and there was a big magma cube either side of me. I mean, what an unfortunate way to log onto the server. But it's not all bad news because Hypno was nearby to pick up my items. And well, you can see I'm still wearing them. So we're all good. So that, my friends, is our witch hut. And we came here through the nether some time ago to gather clay from the swamp. Well, I was about to set off in my boat for a long journey to find some ice off in the ocean. Turns out there's some right here in the river, which is terrific. So I've chomped up all of that with my pick and we've got plenty here. However, I need to turn this into packed ice. So we've kind of only got two and a bit stacks. Should be enough for our needs though. And yes, we need the ice for our witch farm as we're gonna be building a very unique design this time around. So I'm not even ready to record. I'm doing preparation stuff for the farm. And I've been visited again. Why are they visiting me so often? I don't get it. And so I've kept the captain and disposed of the rest. I don't think we'll ever use this guy though because he's a long, long way from home. So we are going to have platforms of ice where the witches will spawn and we are going to use zoglins to knock them off. Yes, to, to farm them, you know? That's how this one's gonna work. And so behind me, we have a nether portal, which I will use to get to the nether. And on this side, we've got the one that we're going to send the Zoglins through. And it just so happens that this witch farm that we visited earlier in the season, its nether equivalent is the right biome for Hoglins to spawn in. Now, if we bring a Hoglin to the overworld, it'll turn into a Zoglin. So over here, I've set up and synchronized these two portals. 
The next trick is to lure the hoglins in, and sadly, they're all spawning down here at the moment. I want them to spawn on the other side. I've also got some of these fungies down on the ground to keep me safe while I clear out this area. So in order to get more of them to notice me and head towards me, we are going to have to clear the area. I'm going to be chopping down some of the woods and ripping out some of the warp blocks, and hopefully some of them that are in these open areas will come towards me. In fact, I think I've got the attention of one over here, maybe, soon, yeah? There we go. Now this fella's coming for me. Now this guy's going to hit real hard, so I don't actually want to get hit by the hoglin. And now it's backing away because of the fungi, so this is when I start to remove some of this that is here to protect me. Dang it, they just killed the hoglin! <laughs> but that dance is awesome. Okay, I love that. <laughs> And now, my friends, I interrupt this video to bring you a message from today's sponsor of this video. When using the internet, it is almost certain that your internet service provider will keep a log of your online browsing activity. Here in the UK, it's actually the law that all the websites you visit must be logged and stored. In other countries, this information can be sold to data broker firms and other companies to use at their discretion. If this concerns you, like it does me, then you may be interested in ExpressVPN. It works on many popular devices like smartphones, iPads, laptops and PCs. It will simply run in the background, consuming next to no resources and add a layer of security. A VPN acts like a proxy, creating an encrypted connection to forward your browsing activity through their servers where they do not keep logs of what you're doing. This means your internet service provider can see you connecting to ExpressVPN, but nothing else. There are other benefits too. You can connect to servers from all around the world, allowing you to appear to be in a different country. This is great for streaming services like Netflix. I love the show Vikings, but it isn't available here in the UK. If I use ExpressVPN to connect to a server in Canada, then I'll be able to watch the show. So if this interests you, then head over to expressvpn.com slash Asuma. Using this link will get your first three months for free with a yearly subscription. You can find the link to that in the description box down below. And without further ado, let's get back to the episode. Right, here we go again. I'm not optimistic because it's going to freak out when it gets to this area. It does every... maybe... Nope, there it is. It turns around. Why does it do that? Ah, now these lot are going to hunt you down. So after 20 minutes of fumbling around, I finally figured out the sequence of events you need to do to get these hoglins to go through the portal. Most importantly, you're going to need a lead and a name tag. And also a hoglin. <laughs> we, we need a hoglin to spawn. And at long last, do we have not one, but two. Oh, no, no, no. Don't escape. Don't escape. <laughs> that is not allowed. I also have fawns on my armor, which is uh, really bad. But once they're near the fungi down here, then they're kind of pacified as they try to run away. So at this point, what we can do is first of all name tag one so it doesn't despawn in the overworld. Then with a lead, we can pull it through the portal over here. Aha! And now we can see that it was a success and that it's slowly converting into a zoglin. There it goes! Now, if we try to nudge this guy, oh dear, <laughs> as you can see, uh, it hits me before I hit it. So we just need to think and use our head and put a little bit of water here. Uh-huh. And down it goes. And as you'll see, there's actually another one down there already. And this is because we're going to put two of them on each floor. So we need another four of them. And we also need some ice to fill in this floor. And then put some water in here to break the full damage for the next Oglins. And I think now's a good time to shout out Rayworks' tutorial video on how to build a witch farm powered by Zoglins. You see, I knew this was the method that I wanted to use, but I just couldn't figure out how we would kill the witches. And so I went and checked out his tutorial and realized that there were a ton of different things that I didn't really know that I was doing. And I tell you what, it saved me a ton of time and effort. So if you want to check that out, there'll be a link in the description box down below. And in the meantime, I will be continuing to do this. Look, there's a couple more over there. So it shouldn't be long and we'll have all six that we need. And I'm actually going to try an experiment for this next one. And I will leave one of these here on this side. So when we bring this next one through, I'm going to follow it through this portal. And I'll have just a moment here to take my lead back and possibly push it down. Okay, no. I'm, I'm, I'm chickening out. It didn't go in. 
And now we'll just use water now that you're a Zoglin. And that is actually it for the second floor, so we can fill this in. And I'll tell you what, once you know what you're doing, this becomes all too easy. There we go. That's... No, no. Ooh, okay, that's a problem I actually avoided before. So yeah, letting them actually turn to Zoglins first is a good idea. So, what are we going to do next? Well, how about the killing bit for the witches? You see, I didn't want to elevate them all the way up into the sky where the player will be AFK to kill them with a looting sword, as that would involve a lot of building. And so this is where Ray had an ingenious trick where we'll be able to kill them very easily and collect all the drops just underneath this platform. And I really like the solution to this problem with the water streams here. What you do is you go around and you add one in each corner to the right hand side. And then with this, all the water lines up like that. So any witch that falls down here or gets shoved down here by a Zoglin will fall onto this little area below. And here is the next bit of brilliance. We are going to stack 24 minecarts into this single spot. And then due to the entity cramming game rule, any mob that then will enter there will take damage from the entity cramming thing itself. Whew, okay, there we go. Right, so that's all ready for witches to fall in it. So now we get to build up the walls of this thing, which we actually use stair blocks for. So by using stone, it should be pretty clear that I'm not interested in aesthetics here. So basically by using these blocks at the wall, the game's spawning algorithm treats them differently from whole blocks and therefore gives us a better chance of having witches spawn on the inside. And rather importantly, I've got to remember these need to go in the corners all the way to the top as well. So there'll be some of these stair blocks on the inside as well as the outside. So I'm at an awkward point here where most of this stuff is set up and ready to go, but now we have to do the platforms, right? And the Zoglins are going to want to escape. They also have water in them that I want to pick up. Yeah, okay, so that's done. And I think the way I'm going to have to do this is like so. Uh-huh, so now they can move into that space and I'm going to have to back off and go over here. Right, and then they can go around that corner. Yeah, I'm basically going to have to do this each and every time. Key thing here though, you can see the Zoglins themselves can't fall down the edge here. And luckily the top floor is going to be the easiest actually, because I can reach everything from this hole up the top here. Thank goodness, because that has been rather tricky. So in theory, all of the hard work is now done and we just need to stand up here, right? Well, this next thing I'm going to show you is a mod. It's not changing anything in the world. But it can create a giant sphere around me, the player, when I'm sat here. And this actually tells us where mobs will despawn. So down on this bit of land here, they can actually spawn and stay in the area. But outside of it, they will despawn. So I need to light up a couple of spots down below. And I also have my camera account on the server. And I can do the same thing again by pressing a button and bringing up that despawn sphere. If we go down below... You'll see that at this spot right here where the witches land is perfectly uh, distanced. Did, did something just drop into this? Oh yeah, look at this. Look at this. Okay, so down come the witches. Now are they instantly dying? I think there's something wrong with the despawn sphere here. So I've moved the player down by two blocks. And look at this, it's made the difference. Dang, I mean it's working. This is awesome. Oh, oh, yes, check this out. If we hang out here for a second, you can see how this works, right? So when they choose to attack the witch, the witch doesn't really have time to do anything, right? <laughs> so now I've constructed myself a, a little chamber up here in the sky. And we're just going to go down to the bottom with some torches. Light up that little bit of land. I'm going to change the beacon so it's resistance and regeneration. Even though I'm pretty sure nothing bad's going to happen to me while I'm up here. Aha, so the night is coming and now you can see the glow of the land down there. When I press the button, you'll see it neatly lines up with all of that. So, yeah, we should be good for some spawn rates here. Now, there are other hermits online, so that could affect the rates here. Uh, but I can hear the witches getting knocked off. Here we go. One just spawned right there. Another one spawned over here. Check this out. So basically, by the time they get attacked by the Zoglin, they're not really going to be able to respond and throw a potion. This one actually is getting a good chance of being able to. 
And then the other one comes along and pushes it off. <laughs> and as long as the witches keep taking damage, then they'll keep drinking health potions. So even if they don't get knocked off straight away, I think there's a very, very slim chance that they'll actually throw a potion back. And so with that, it is time for me to stay exactly where I am for an overnight AFK session. Let's see how much redstone we can get from this thing. And it would appear that fortunes have favoured me here because hardly any of the hermits were playing last night and this morning as well. I had a fantastic AFK session with the server all to myself. And as you can see, there were lots and lots of witches spawning. And down here at the bottom, let's have a look. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Excellent. Full to the brim. And now you're probably thinking, X, you only put three double chests in. Well, before I went AFK, I thought we should at least add a few more, right? So I added four extra ones. So there's seven here in total. <laughs> and literally all of them are filled to the brim. Now something crossed my mind when I was AFK, thinking about the farm, dreaming of all that redstone. I realised that we could have built this thing with tinted glass. Either you build it with glass and then you have to build a big old roof to stop the light getting in. But now of course we have tinted glass and if I did that we could actually see the farm in action a lot clearer. I can use the camera account but it's kind of awkward to get in there and show you it. You know what, I think I'll have time to do that this episode actually. So we'll investigate getting some tinted glass but right now... I need to get my hands on some shulker boxes so we can transport these goods because, of course, we're going to sell them in the Evil Emporium. And so, my friends, today is an historic occasion as we are going to use our wings again. And I got to about 1080 last night when I AFK'd and so those numbers are a little exaggerated but we're over 1000 and Iskal's online so I asked him, are we good to now fly now that we've reached 1000 days? And he said yes and we're going to get our medals. Later on in this episode, first of all though, got to kill this Enderman. Dude, I'm, I'm trying to record here. So we need shulker boxes and there we go. Back down to zero. Yes, I am here to fly off and find myself some end cities and kill some shulkers. But you've seen it all before, right? Which is why we're now back here at the storage area <laughs> to show off the complete product. This is fantastic. We now have four walls of shulkers everywhere, which is just Awesome, and in the ender chest, look at this, I've made room for some more in here as well, compacted, did some renaming, moving items around, and all is looking good. We are now very organised, but of course the purpose of all of this was to actually move some items from the witch farm, and I think I had seven chests in total, which is basically double in shulker boxes, right? So if I take 14 of these, then we're good. Oh, that is just so very satisfying right there. Awesome. They're all in my inventory. Okay, let's head over to the witch farm. And guess what? I'm back. Ah, the wonders of video editing, right? So you may remember the concept of these shulker walls is that we can look at the material that we want. However, these aren't really suitable for this as we can't put a redstone block here or the button won't work because it's already a power source right and uh, I can't put glowstone there because it works like glass does if I press the button here it doesn't transmit the redstone signal so for these types of blocks we might just use something else to signify what exactly it is however these are as I said not really the things that I kind of want like on demand to come along and pick up so over here is a much better demonstration and what I'm getting at. If I want to do a project with blocks related to these two, they're all just in here ready to go. I can press the button, pick it up and on my way to do a project I am. So over here I've also added terracotta and also one for concrete. So the example behind me was a little bit on the useless side. However, there probably will be items that we want on bulk, maybe something like ender pearls that we just want to pick up and bring with us and they'll need some sort of block to represent that but for the most part it's just going to be like this hey that's the material we need let's grab that and go so pretty much everything we've done so far this episode has been related to the witch farm and getting our redstone and now that that's done you may remember we had an idea when we were over at the witch farm to replace the stone with tinted glass okay that was that was overly dramatic i really like using these camera tools okay they're just, they're just so much fun. <laughs> I'm always looking for excuses to use them. So below the base area, there's about three of these geodes not too far from one another. We could get to them using minecarts, kind of like Joe Hills has done. 
and then we need to adapt the farm or the, the blocks here into a farm and it's these ones, the ones that are budding that we need to convert into a farm and this might look like it's going to be tricky and difficult to do because often when you build farms in Minecraft you tend to think maximum efficiency and sometimes that can be very very difficult so if you don't think maximum efficiency you can often find something a little easier to put together. Oh, also, these sounds are gorgeous. <laughs> and when I walk on the blocks, it makes the sound too. Oh, it's so wonderful and musical. And speaking of noises, I can hear all sorts of horrors around me in the caves right now because I've been AFK overnight and loads of them are just accumulated. And the reason that I've been AFK is to activate our Amethyst Geode farm over here. It runs on a super slow timer. This thing is guesstimated to run every one and a half hours. So we have an EFO hopper clock for five minutes over here. And then every five minutes it'll unlock these for a brief moment to allow one item to pass across just like that. And that means that every hour and a half or so this farm over here gets activated. But the farm itself is kind of messy and a very interesting concept. I'm actually going to wait for a future episode to talk about that in a little bit more depth. What I need to do right now is check and see how many drops we got. Uh-huh. Not bad. I don't know if we could have got more or less, but this is promising. Sadly, though, we didn't get enough to make the tinted glass for our witch farm. And also... I think I know what I'm going to do with these pillagers now. I think there's somewhere that they could go to work, right? Uh, the Evil Emporium, if that isn't obvious. And that farm will always be running when I'm in the area. And we can, of course, expand it as well. Which means maybe one day we'll sell it over here. And of course, as no surprise to anyone, I've got our red dust, our grey dust, the glow dust, and white dust all set up here for sale. This one's probably not going to, you know, move at all. Which is why it's relatively cheap and these are the prices that I've gone for and they're kind of confusing because you've got to get your dirt coins and then divide up those diamonds into these different fractions and oh yeah I, I, I'm glad I'm not a customer of this store you know and don't tell Evil X that either I just work here I, I, I do as he commands anyway my friends this is the end of the episode I really hope you enjoyed it I had a great time on the server today so leave a like if you did thank you for supporting the channel and I'll see you soon in the next one Bye-bye.